Hello and welcome back to the Esplanade. My name is Paul and I'm the lighting technician here at the Esplanade Theatre. So let's go into the main theatre and have a look at some of the equipment that we have in there. Let me just turn the lights on. So here you can see we have one of the LXs down. If you've watched our previous episodes of Backstage, you'll know that we have five LXs on the stage and this is LX1. Basically the LXs each have a number of circuits on them. There's 18 different circuits, they're all numbered, and there's a power pick which goes upstairs to the dimmer room, which supplies the power to each of these. Let's quickly go upstairs, and I'm gonna show you the dimmer room and where the power comes from and how we control these outlets. So here we are upstairs at the dimmer room. As you can see above me here, all the cables are coming in from the theater and they go into the dimmer, dimming room and into all the dimming modules. Let's have a look at them. So inside here, we have a 2000 amp supply, which supplies five dimming racks, which control all of the lighting and the outlets within the theater. Each dimming rack has 96 channels of dimming. We have a total of 480 channels of dimming across five dimming racks. As you can imagine, it gets pretty warm in here when everything is running at full power. So we have our own air conditioning system which keeps everything cool in here. And you can probably hear the fans sucking all the air through the system. So if we do have a failure, each of these units is modular. They can be removed. As you can see here, this is one dimming unit. It has two units of dimming in it, and we can just easily pull them out and replace them. We can replace them with relay units if we don't want to dim uh, the lights, so we'll show you later some of the lights do not need dimming power, they just need switch power, so we use a relay unit, um, so we replace those in here. And all of these controlled, each module has its own little controller here, which runs each one of the uh, dimming racks. Each one of those controllers is linked via network cable and DMX, which we'll talk about later, back to this equipment rack here, which is then fed downstairs to the control room where we run the lighting console from. So let's go back downstairs, have a look at the, uh, the lighting that we've got on the LX1, and we'll show you what happens there. So here we are back on the stage. Um, I just talked about the dimming upstairs. Uh, this is one of the fixtures which does need dimming. It is a conventional fixture with a conventional lamp in, a 750 watt bulb. Um, it's made up of three parts, uh, the lamp housing, the body, and the lens. The lens is interchangeable, so you can get different angles of throw for the, uh, for the light, so you can change the beam angle depending on what you want to use it for. Let's just turn it on. I'll show the operation of some of the other feature features that it has. Okay, so that's on. I'm gonna point it back at the site here so you can see the beam. So as I said, lenses are interchangeable. This has got a 36 degree lens in. So by sliding the barrel in and out on the lens, we can focus the light to enable us to get a sharp beam. There you can see it's focused, we have a sharp beam. But if we don't have lots of different size lenses and we want to change the size of the beam and keep it circular, we have a thing called an iris. So this iris basically slots into the light and you can see we can just change the aperture here to change the size of the beam. So if I just drop that into the light quickly here, we can see that if I refocus here, there we go, I can now change the size of the beam by using the iris. So that's, that's very good. It means that you don't have to change the lens out too, too often. Also, the other option that we have on here is the shutters. So there are four shutters on the fixture and we use them for maybe cutting off an object on the stage. If we don't want the light to spill somewhere, we can use the shutters. So I'll show you quickly here the shutters and I will bring them in slowly. And if you see over there, and I'll focus it again so you can see, it's just a hard straight edge which cuts across the beam. 
and there's four of them. So I can bring it in, basically make squares or patterns or whatever on the, around the area that I need to focus the light on. And not always do we want it a hard beam. Sometimes we'll leave it so it is a little softer around the edges so that it's not so noticeable that you've got a shutter in there. So of course, conventional fixture, the only one problem is it is that it is white. We have no color in it. So how are we gonna make this colored? So what we have is a selection of different filters, which we can put in front of the lens. Now this manufacturer is Lee Filters, there's Roscoe, there's lots of other manufacturers, but basically they provide you a swatch book and you can see every single color gel that they make in the swatch book. So basically the lighting di designer will choose the color that he wants for the show. And we will then take it, cut it to size so that it fits in front of the lens. You can see there's different sizes here. So this is the correct one for this light. If I put it in front of the lens, you can see we now have red light coming out of it. The only problem with these, you can only have one color in each light. So if you wanted multiple colors on stage, you need a lot of lights with different colors in the gel frame. There is another option for these, and they are called gobos. Gobos are great, they're for making different patterns. So basically you can project a pattern uh, using a metal disc with a, with a cut pattern on it. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into the gobo holder. And then this slides into the light path within the fixture. And you can see, except that this one it's very, very loose and it's falling out, so it's not a very good one to use. Let's try this one. There we go. There we go. So you can see here, the gobo is now in the light path and we can project an image onto the screen or onto the floor or onto set pieces. Pretty much anything you can think of, they can cut a gobo for. We have horses, we have dancers, there's glass gobos with multiple colors. So there's all sorts of different things that can go in here. But this one you can see is a, a very nice ivy pattern. Okay, let's move on quickly and look at LED fixtures. Okay, so the LED fixture. So as I said before, that conventional fixture needed a dimming circuit. LED fixtures do not, they just need power. So when I said we could interchange the dimmers for relays, so we could have com constant power, this is what we have on the LEDs. They use way less power. We can run way more on one circuit. Um, I think I have five of these connected to each circuit at the moment. I could add more. Um, so I have 18 circuits on each LX. I'm not gonna need them all when everything is changed to LED. As you can see, there's some extra cables. We have power in and out, but we also have what's called DMX. So DMX is a control line. It's a digital multiplex, a serial control line, and I can have 512 channels of control on each fixture. Each one of these LEDs, these ones, is using five channels. So for each one of these, I have five channels of control. Dimming, strobe, red, green, and blue. So let's move forward and have a look at the actual fixture itself. You can see it's on, and we have white light coming from it. So I don't know whether you can notice, but this white light is a lot whiter than a conventional fixture. Now we can change that because it is color mixing, but let me just show you first how we're making this white light. It's not like the, the lamp in your house that when you turn it on, it's just a nice white and you can get different temperatures of it. <coughs> this is actually made up of multiple colors. There you go. So you can see this fixture has actually got red, blue, green, and lime, which is making the white light. And it all automatically does that for me. I don't need to think about it. I tell it, DMX, I want it to be white, and it will create the white light for me. But of course, I said the problem with the other lights was you could only have one channel, channel of color on each light. This. I can have any color I want. So let me just have a quick look here. 
So you can see, just by the touch of a button, I can change the color from the LED. Far easier than a conventional fixture. So there you are, LED fixture. So pretty good, I can change the color in this, but I still have to put a gobo in, I still have to change the iris, the shutters I have to do manually, which means I have to get up there and do it by hand, get a lift out and go up there when it's there and focus it. So wouldn't it be far better if I had something that was totally automated? Well, we have. Let's just walk over here. So I have a fixture here. There's a fully automated moving LED fixture. This does everything that those other fixtures do, but I can do it just by using DMX control from my lighting console. So let me just turn it on. So there you can see, I just have a super bright light. Let me turn this off. There we go. Super bright white light. Let me let it run through a whole system of, um, well, a demo basically. So I can zoom it in and out. You can see it's got a pretty impressive zoom. Then it has multiple colors. And built-in gobos. There's a gobo wheel with multiple gobos in that I can select. And it'll just go through a few selections here. And each one of these gobos is interchangeable if you want to get different ones. It comes with a standard set of gobos. And there's two different gobo wheels. There's a static and a moving. This is the moving gobo wheel that we're looking at now. And I'll quickly demonstrate. So here you can see we've put a prism in front of it. So we've split the beam into three. And I'm rotating the prism. So I can create effects with the prism by moving it. And then I can rotate it. And then I can rotate the gobo within the prism. So it's pretty impressive. And here you can see I also have automated shutters on it. So I can adjust the shutters from sat at my lighting desk and rotate them to whatever angle I want. Pretty impressive. It makes it so much easier for me. And it's a totally moving light. I can point it anywhere in the theater. So this is definitely the way ahead. I'm just gonna show you quickly some other fixtures that we use for uh, rock and roll mostly. Um, so I'll just pull them in and we'll have a quick look at those. Here we have a pipe that I use for concerts. Um, so it basically gives me effect lighting for the concerts. It's got moving lights, strobe, and some audience blinders on it. So if I show you quickly, I bring these lights up. So they I like actually moving in an effect here. So you can see them moving on the floor. I can change the color on them. I can change gobos in them. So it all creates effects for a concert, depending on what sort of concert, whether I want it rock and roll and fast and flashing, I can do that, or I can just do very smooth movements. So we also have strobe lights. You can see you have one here. Let's turn it on so everyone knows what a strobe light is. We have a couple of those, and we can also strobe all of the fixtures on stage. So we could create the whole stage, like a big strobe fixture if we really wanted to. And then sometimes the performers want to see the audience. So we have audience blinders. So basically these just light out the audience. You can see the audience is fully lit here. That's just a quick look at what we have here in the theater. So next episode, I think we'll go back and we'll look at a control system that actually makes all of this work and brings it all together for an event. So I look forward to seeing you next time and uh, I hope you enjoy this.